Hello there, welcome back. So we continue our discussion from our previous topic about using the diode as a half wave rectifier or we also said this circuit works as a peak detector using the simple diode and the capacitor and these are the input output waveforms where the green showed us the sinusoidal input that we apply at a desired frequency of one kilohertz and the diode's behavior helped us to get the output waveform in the blue where the value of capacitor as chosen uh, tries to get the peak value so of the input signal. So refer to the previous model that we have explained this circuit in detail. So the drawback here is that uh, with the capacitor charging and discharging, we are still not able to attain the peak value of the input, which is right here. And the capacitor is getting charged to a halfway of your input signal. So there is output voltage is input voltage minus the diode drop always. So to get rid of this so that we have a precision linear peak detection circuit, we would incorporate an operational amplifier into the circuit. So to do so, I'm going to modify this circuit uh, in this way. I will click the component library and go for choosing the operational amplifier. So there are a range of operational amplifiers available. I am going to use the universal op amp, which is a linear single pole op amp. So it has one dominant pole with no internal nodes or output voltage range limit. So its output can swing to any voltage level. So it's a kind of uh, ideal model. Uh, if you want to use the specific parts from the manufacturer, you're welcome to do so. I will show the exercise using this uh, particular circuit. Here you can click to open this macro models example circuit also. If you click it, this is how the circuit uh, behaves. So that's the macro model has been given. But for now, we will focus on using this part. So go back again, check this universal open, type in here, and then click OK. So here you have now, and you have the positive rail supply, negative rail supply. There are two inputs to this uh, amplifier. And then there is an output. So again, here we would uh, continue to have the diodes uh, into our circuit. So we will just type the diode now here. And there is this diode. And I will place control R to place the diode one diode let's say here and one diode let's say here and then press escape button and then i would need to use the ground where i will connect the positive input to the ground i would need two resistors also so one resistor let's say control r i am going to put somewhere here and one resistor let's say over here and see how I'm making the connections. So I see this uh, wire getting connected to the positive input and here I have this negative input and then this is how I connect the diode. This is how I connect the resistor and uh, the output is going to be like this. So see how I'm making the connection so that the input output waveforms can be plotted. So again, I take the wire from here and that's it. So this is how I want my socket uh, to behave actually. So that's my diode D1, that's my diode D3, there's a OPAM that have, I need a power supply actually. So what I'll do, I will just see here, then click voltage, click here, and place the voltage supply somewhere here. And I need, uh, I can choose the dual power supply between positive and negative, or I just say one power supply and uh, another terminal is uh, grounded. So I will have this from this V2 and then press escape, then I will right click this and label this net as my voltage supply V plus. 
that's it and i place it on the wire there and this way v plus goes here also because i want to apply the positive signal to the diodes uh, power supply and that's it and then for the negative end of this is connected to the ground so i will just uh, say this is connected to the ground and that's it now there is uh, this net which is my output so what i'm going to do i will just uh, use the right click on this net and again i will click label net type v out choose it to be output forward and click ok and control r maybe or just like that that's it and now i need a input voltage source so let me delete this out because i don't need this circuit now uh, rather i want so instead of deleting that uh, let me just uh, do some little bit adjustment because i can use the same voltages uh, voltage sources here so let's say the voltage source remain there we don't need capacitor we have chosen the output node also we don't need diode also so we just use the cutter to get rid of it and that's it and then i will place the drag with the f8 and put this voltage source near the input terminal of power now we'll click this uh, close this window also and i will just maximize this window so that my circuit fits there now i am using this uh, voltage source connections to the resistor r2 here and that's how i do it okay so let me drag this uh, voltage source uh, line right here and how it's or maybe i will just move it a bit so that the signal is properly connected and this line also can be drawn to this one no this one and like this you can do that right and now our sinusoidal voltage source is set to the previous way uh, just like what we set with the diode circuit and we saw the diode circuit is uh, essentially uh, half wave rectifier and uh, we are with the help of capacitor able to smooth out the uh, output signal that is the constant dc constant and uh, but the drawback is output is not uh, reaching the peak value of this so it's not really efficient uh, peak detector but here you have the operational amplifier with the gain open loop gain i right click here and show you what is the open loop gain so value of open loop gain is set to be 1 into 10 to the power minus 6 the gain bandwidth uh, product is about 10 mega so we have a exclusive module on the what is gain bandwidth product and how it is useful so refer to that uh, and then offset voltage of this amplifier is zero it has a differential input impedance about 500 mega so all these parameters you can actually change so let's say let me set the value of 10 here for example and gain bandwidth can also be changed and all those values can be a different uh, change all these other parameters e and i n they are uh, if you know the equivalent model of the operational amplifier you can relate to those parameters we have covered them in another modules also so now i have these input voltage source let's say i right click and show you again this uh, dc offset voltage is zero it has an amplitude of one volt uh, as before and then the frequency is 1 into 10 to the power 3 hertz that is 1000 hertz number of cycles chosen are 10 and i'm going to un uh, run the transient analysis on this circuit as before for the 10 millisecond time uh, now look at the values of the resistors i want to choose so let's say this is my resistor r1 the value i have chosen about uh, 1k here and here also i choose the value of about 1k so both the resistors are 
of same value, then diode D1 and D3 are there. Let me choose the supply voltage for this circuit, DC 5 volt, for example, or maybe DC 10 volt should be okay. Now I am all set to run the transient simulation of this circuit, but I forgot to connect the ground uh, to the negative power pin of the operation amplifier, so I will do that. And with that said, uh, my circuit is complete. But before we run simulation, it is always important to know theoretically or analytically how the circuit is likely to work. So let's say for the positive half cycle, what I see here comes the positive that makes your diode forward bias, this diode D1. And the positive also is appearing here, making the diode D3 reverse bias. So it acts as an open switch. This acts as a short switch. So it means there is no connection of output to the uh, through the diode D3 to the back to the circuit. So you basically see that uh, your output is disconnected from the uh, amplifier circuit. So output is zero. Right, you don't uh, get the output uh, here. So you have the output at this node, but since the diode is open, the output is zero here. So for the positive half cycle, output is zero. For the negative half cycle, let's say the negative potential comes here, making this diode acts as a reverse pass as an open switch. And the negative comes here, making this is uh, forward bias. So there is now a short circuit here. And with this diode open and this short, you can see that this is an inverting amplifier of a pan with the gain minus R1 by R2. So the with the equal values of register, your output is negative of the input. The gain is negative one. Okay, so output is, uh, if you have a negative half cycle, the output will be positive half cycle. So again, the positive and negative comes here and the cycle repeats. For the positive half cycles of input, output is zero. For the negative half cycles of the inputs, output is the positive half cycles, uh, which are 180 degree phase shift of the input signal. Okay, so let's verify that. So what I'll do, I will click the run simulation, see the input first, which is the pretty good signal of a DC value of zero volt and going to one volt up and one volt down. And then I want to plot the output on the same and look at the beautiful waveform in the blue for the positive half cycle I have zero output for the negative half cycle I have the I have the uh, a kind of uh, inverted output but it is still it, it is reaching the peak one okay and this is called as precision linear half wave rectifier using diodes and you can also experiment with uh, different so you can replace this model macro model using uh, practical op-amp circuits, uh, ICs from the manufacturer. Similarly, you can choose the appropriate diodes. So if you want to convert your alternating signals into DC signals, you can always use this kind of precision circuits where the signal levels, for example, let's say, I have used one volt here, which is greater than diode forward voltage drops. How about we can use the 100 millivolt signal in case of a purely diode circuit as we covered previously, 100 millivolt signal is not going to forward bias your diode. So that circuit won't work. But this time, let us see the behavior here by changing this one. So you see, even if I reduce the signal below the diode voltage drops, my circuit is behaving perfectly and it is a precision half wave rectifier. So it's called as precision half wave rectifier because it is able to convert the alternating, a small minute alternating signals into uh, rectified DC voltage, okay? So let's even you reduce it to 10 or something, 
you can actually do that. But with the assumption that your operational amplifier's gain is much, much high, usually 10 to the power 5 to 10 to the power 7. How much we have set is 10 to the power 6. So yeah, in practical op amps, you can have that kind of gain. With practical op amps, you can have that kind of gain bandwidth products as well. But the offset voltage will be there. So if you choose offset voltage of, let's say, 10 millivolts, now you want to see the effect. Let's save and see if the circuit behaves well or not. No, now your output, uh, your offset, with the practical op amps, your output is not going to uh, behave as expected. Okay, so you for the for the positive half cycles, you have inverted output and all that. It is not working well, as said. What about you have like uh, from instead of ten milli, you have let's say ten micron, and then click OK and uh, simulate the circuits. It's still now working properly. Okay, so it makes sense you have uh, the signal there. How about look at this uh, offsets level? Uh, for example, you have 10 millivolt input and uh, for the output, you have some, some drop in the output there. So it's a matter of further investigation, but for now you can assume that the circuit can work pretty well with the small AC signals. So hope you understood this video about uh, using the op-amp precision halfway rectifiers to convert time-varying signals into the DC levels. If you did so, like this video, put some comment, share with others, subscribe to our channel and uh, stay tuned for more engaging contents like this. Till then, Wish you happy learning.